Thank you to everybody who's joining us today. My name is Jean Jones. I'm the Director of Marketing for the Howard Company. And today um, we're excited to be joined by our partners at Menu Technologies. Um, and we're going to be discussing the, um, I, the title is quite long, Integrated Restaurant Ecosystems as an Engine to Accelerate Sales Growth. That's quite a mouthful. And I think you're going to get a lot out of this, this conversation. Uh, let me introduce our panelists today, starting with our team from the Howard Company. Uh, Rod, introduce yourself, please. Yeah, my name is Rod Clauser, uh, National Sales Manager for the Howard Company. Been here with the Howard Company for, uh, oh boy, eight or nine years now. So uh, longevity with the company is here. So we can help you out with uh, anything you need. And Laura Paff. Yep, that's what I am, Laura Paff. <laughs> I'm the Inside Sales Manager at East Coast here, and I've been here just about two years. Okay, and Carolina? Hi, everyone. My name is Carolina Scaltriti, and I work for Menu Technologies. I've been with the company for over four years, and I'm responsible for key accounts. Okay, and Carl? Good, good morning. I'm Carl. I'm the CEO and one of the co-founders uh, of Menu. The other one is my son. And uh, we're excited to be here today. Very well. Then uh, I guess we will get started. Um, Carolina has a, a, a presentation that they're going to go over with us to help us uh, start to understand exactly um, what the title of this uh, webinar means. So I'll let you take it take it away, Carolina. Thank you, Jean. Super. So before we move to the interactive section of um, this webinar, I'll just start by showing you a few slides and introducing the topic. As Jean said, it's quite a long title, so we want to make sure that you understand the principles of what uh, an integrated restaurant ecosystem is about. So um, just by um, showing you a little bit the evolution in the industry, as you know, um, the restaurant started with very fragmented systems. So in the past, uh, restaurants um, typically just had a POS system. So it was a single channel um, type of setup. And then it evolved to a multi-channel um, setup. So restaurants typically added maybe a web application, a kiosk application, and the systems um, were basically connected. But where restaurants really want to be is here. So this is, oops. So this is um, the omni-channel sphere. Uh, what does this mean? It actually means that um, you have ownership of the data because everything is interconnected and you're the one actually um, having that relationship with your clients. So um, not only you have data ownership, but you also ensure that there is data accuracy. So instead of having different backend systems where you manage all the data from, you actually end up having one single backend system um, and um, you basically enable also the tool to collect a lot of data from your clients uh, which can in turn uh, be used for personalized um, marketing campaigns. So as you see here from our return on investment perspective, Omnichannel is the one that enables you to have a higher um, return on investment. Um, so what are some of the other benefits of a digital landscape? Um, the, um, besides from the things that I mentioned to you right now, I'd like to present to you a few figures from some recent studies that have been conducted. Um, these ones here are from Deloitte and Forbes. So the first point is that up to 70% of your guests prefer to order online. So offering a digital solution actually enables you to meet the demand of your clients. Um, second point is that um, when you do offer a digital solution, your clients end up spending uh, more. So the average ticket size increases by 26%. And this is thanks to upselling and cross-selling. And then on top of that, if you introduce smart uh, upselling and cross-selling, thanks to special algorithms can, that can be programmed in the system, you can even achieve higher ticket size increases. 
And last but not least, um, offering an integrated loyalty program can enable you to um, increase the repeat visits by up to 30%. So by offering uh, rewards, by offering coupons, by offering promotions, um, you enable your clients and you uh, ensure that they are actually going to come back more frequently to your restaurant. Um, so what does um, strengthening your leadership uh, in digital look like? Um, so um, the first point is you want to be where your customers are. Um, so you really want to offer a frictionless uh, omni-channel digital ordering experience. So most of your clients are on their personal devices. So um, you want to... Um, provide them with a native app or with a web application that allows them to order from wherever they are. But other clients maybe prefer to come to your store and order via kiosk or a POS system. So you really want to ensure that you have a seamless experience regardless of um, what order channel your client chooses to, to use. The second um, recipe for success based on our experience is actually getting to know your customers. So you're only able to really get to know your customers if you have ownership of the data. Um, and if you're able to collect the data from all the different channels, and this is only possible via an omni-channel um, order experience. Um, you also want to increase your loyalty, right? So from a marketing perspective, there is a cost associated to acquiring a new client. Um, but if you actually use your existing clients and make them come more frequently, that has a big benefit because um, you don't actually have to invest as much in marketing activities. So offering a loyalty program uh, actually increases the repeat usage as we've seen before from data um, that has been published, it's um, up to 30%. Um, and also very important, especially nowadays, is delivery. We hear a lot about delivery. So you want to ensure that you sign up on all the important delivery aggregators um, in your area, but not only. So you also want to make sure that you offer um, a platform for selling delivery directly. So it's okay if you mention on your website, yeah, go um, and visit this external delivery aggregator to order delivery, but it's even more powerful if you offer that tool yourself because that enables you to actually own the relationship with your clients. So that's a, a big, a big part uh, of the puzzle as well. And ultimately all of this um, is aimed at really helping you be more successful and helping you in building stronger relationships with your clients. So um, thanks to the omni-channel ecosystem, you're collecting a lot of data and you can use that data for personalized marketing campaigns. And not only, uh, an omni-channel ecosystem also enables you to create a two-way feedback stream. So um, you are able to uh, allow your guests also to interact with you. So they can submit feedback on their order. Um, they can uh, submit feedback on their overall experience in your store. So you can analyze that data and also get back to them. So before we move into um, the dialogue, I just wanted to show you an example of an ecosystem architecture, um, just so that you're a bit more familiar with how that could work. So it starts really by um, having a, an e-commerce platform uh, with all the different order channels. And you have all the different order types. Uh, you have a content management system where this data is managed and you also have your own UI and UX. So everything that is displayed on your kiosk, on your web app and uh, on your native app is in your look and feel. Then you have the ordering engine, the loyalty integrated, the engagement integrated. You have analytics, you have delivery, you have dispatching. You also have a marketing website that you can power from the same ecosystem and the same provider. Uh, and also very importantly, what the uh, omni-channel ecosystem can offer you if you select the correct partner is basically integration with external channels. So it means that the menu that is displayed on these external channels is managed by the same backend. Same applies for payment integrations and POS systems. So I hope that helped uh, a little bit to set the scene. I really look forward to the discussion. And if you have um, a personal need that you would like to discuss with us uh, offline, feel free to contact us at any time.
Wow, that, that was a lot of information. So thank you very much, uh, Carolina. Um, I forgot to mention at the, at the outset, if you have any questions, please just type them, type them into the, the Q&A um, section and we'll try to get to those at the end of the conversation. So um, trying to just absorb all of that, um, I think we'd like to just start with just a simple definition of the term omnichannel, just so that everybody has that basis point from where, where we're starting. Carl, would you be able to help us with that? Yeah, um, pleasure. I mean, omni really has different meanings and the meaning that we mean it <laughs> is actually something that is unified or homogeneous. You could also call it this way. And by having uh, all those which used to be isolated solution coming into one system, uh, you can make sure that you get the same information on every channel you choose to collect. Um, and of course, what is important because the ultimate goal of Omnichannel is to personalize the order data so you can then re-engage your customers and get them to come back more often and to spend more. Um, but that is, is, this is very important to have it in one system to have a homogeneous user flow, to have one single user account across all those channels to collect that data, which then helps you to reach back out. And there are some secondary benefits, of course, <clears throat> which is you have a, uni um, a unified user flow. Um, so your guests don't need to get trained. <laughs> on, I mean, in terms of the UX, UI, uh, it's really important that they find the same information on all the channels all the time. And, and that's why we call it omnichannel. But the ultimate goal, you have by introducing an omnichannel solution really is to build that customer relationship. Thank you. So it, it seems to me that uh, the restaurant selling experience is moving into the digital world. So does that mean that the importance of facility, physical restaurant facilities is diminishing? Um, and is that an effect of, of COVID or is that just a natural evolution of, of the industry? Um, I'm going to start with you, Rod. Yeah, I'll talk about that a little bit. So, you know, there, there hasn't been a shift in change for a long time until COVID hit. And I think it really made restaurants look at their whole situation. You know, what do we do for in, in room dining, drive through and so on. And I think restaurants, unfortunately were forced, but I think a lot of them are finding out it was for the good to really, you know, slim down that in room dining and really grab their drive throughs and make those the best they could be and give them the best customer experience um, as if they were in the drive, as if they were in dining. Um, you have to have that same customer experience because people want to know that, hey, your restaurant's still open, you're still doing things. Uh, the way you did when I sat down in your restaurant, the food's still hot. Um, so the addition of takeout and delivery, I mean, for some restaurants who never thought they would be part of that, you know, especially some of the fine dining restaurants, all of a sudden they had to get into the, boy, we're going to have curbside delivery here. That's, that's totally new for us. And how are we going to do that? Um, so you know, I mean, we have a, we have a couple uh, pizza restaurants around here that there's like 40 spaces in their parking lot now that are just for curbside pickup. I mean, it's you've never seen a shift like this before. And, you know, they're, they're finding out that, you know, they're able to, uh, you know, keep their uh, dollar revenue up as if they were doing in-person dining. So does this shift mean a shift in dollars or in, I guess, in money invested uh, from the physical facilities into uh, digital assets? Anybody want to take that one, Laura? You want to take that one? Um, yeah, people are looking at their bottom line and figuring now that they don't have as much dine-in service, they can cut costs in one area for staffing and shift that to another area such as digital technology, drive-through, pickup, um, delivery, things like that. So um, a couple of people that I've talked to have noticed that um, their profit margins have actually increased since they closed some of the in-dining and focused their attention elsewhere. 
Uh, Carl or Carolina, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, there's so many new touch points um, coming our way. Um, I think what we're, what we're dealing with, um, I mean, apart from COVID, which certainly accelerated a lot of things, um, but what we're dealing with really is a mega trend of um, a new, which is driven by gem demographics, uh, a new generation having completely different needs, uh, completely different behaviors, uh, completely different brand loyalty behaviors, <laughs> and um, they're looking for choice. Um, they have, um, they don't have the reflexes like may, my generation may have had <laughs> of let's go out and um, and dine in a restaurant. Let they're they're saying let's go and order something and do something at home or do something somewhere else. Um, but it's really about uh, um, this choice that we provide to those new future customers. And um, one other thing is that the, the, the diversity and the, the number of ordering channels is just increasing so fast. I mean, we first only spoke about uh, delivery platforms. Now we're speaking about all these wide label uh, direct channels where restaurants have the ability to bring back control over their sales again and um, reduce um, uh, the fees that they have to pay away to a third party. Um, at the same time, Google ordering is coming in, facilitating that process, um, which in turn requires um, dispatching with a variety of different fulfillment services. Um, but the, and then now we're even talking about social and conversational ordering through WhatsApp, LinkedIn, Facebook messengers, Instagram. Um, so this is, I think, the beauty of this world. And as Laura said, uh, it has great opportunities for restaurants, even in a difficult time uh, we're all going through with the, with the COVID-19 crisis. Well, you know, and with that, with that choice that the customer is looking for, you know, that's been out there forever. But restaurants just didn't want to push that avenue, or maybe they didn't have the funds in a certain bucket that they needed to have those funds into. And now all of a sudden, the choice for the customer became a mandatory thing they had to look at and uh, really decide, are, are we going to are we going to make it or not? And if we are, what do we need to do to get to that point? The one thing that stuck out in the presentation that you gave, Carolina, that really uh, impacted me was when you talked about owning the data. And, and I, when you tie that together with you know, the traditional way that people would, would visit restaurants, they would just be driving down the road and, and see it, there's, there's no connection, but how, why did this person make the decision to, to to stop here today, and what did they order, and who are they, and what's their age group, and and then with you know the the aggregators, DoorDash and Uber Eats and all that, they own that data, and you don't. And I think there's power in as a marketer. There's certainly power in knowing uh, in owning that data. Can you expand on that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. I mean. Owning and managing customer data is, of course, really crucial, as, as you mentioned. And actually, unfortunately, restaurants is really one of the last business sectors who really started to understand the importance that this has. So um, this shift has kind of forced them to really uh, embrace digital in a much quicker way. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the power of personalized communication, right? Um, if you want to offer uh, a coupon to your client, it's going to be much more well accepted if it's actually linked to their order pattern. So if I'm always ordering the vegetarian menu with you as a brand, um, it doesn't really help me if I receive a coupon for a meat dish, right? So all of that enables you to have a much more powerful relationship to the clients uh, it also enables you to take much better decisions as a business because you can easily analyze, okay, um, what dishes have been sold the most, what coupons have worked best, which coupons have worked the least. So it really helps you to make better decisions uh, as a business, but it also helps you to um, better understand your clients and better tailor your service to what your clients really want. So... Um, so are there any other data points besides those that restaurants should really be paying attention to? Well, there's, that one? 
<laughs> I can maybe start with the answer. Uh, the one thing that really comes to my mind is the operational efficiency. I mean, Carolina was alluding to it, um, but if, if you have a fully integrated um, end-to-end -end digital um, solution, there's just so much information you can extract um, from enhancing your um, operational efficiency. Um, you can, all of a sudden, it becomes um, um, a very transparent operation um, in the sense of how fast do I turn out my food? How fast do I deliver? You can have all these reports on comparisons. Um, I mean, there's, for the good or bad, I mean, but there's just so much data um, you get on your own business that you never had before, um, next to the customer data. But, you know, we're finding every day, we're find, finding new ways of analyzing data and turn things around, around and help companies to get a better understanding of, of the operations too. So, so is is it a little bit overwhelming? I mean, it, a small operation, smaller it, restaurants are are generally run by a small group of people. Even if you're part of a, a chain, they're usually pretty lean operations. How do you keep control or or not get overwhelmed by the amount of information that's being thrown at you? Yeah, so this is where also technology comes in to support because it's not just um, delivering restaurants with a bunch of data that they don't know what to do with. So there are algorithms behind and, and CRM platforms that actually help you use that data in effective ways. So for instance, if you have a feedback tool that is enabled uh, with just a couple of clicks, you can go into the backend system and pull a report of all the feedback that you received last week um, you can see the statistics, you can pull it out in an Excel and you can compare, okay, uh, was the feedback in this restaurant that I owned better than in this other restaurant? Um, so if it's lower in this restaurant for more than one week, maybe I need to look into the operations of that restaurant as the food mm -hmm. quality lower. So you really have uh, dashboards that enable you to digest the data very quickly because uh, it's pointless to have data that you need to spend tons of time in analyzing. And as you said, Jean, uh, especially for smaller businesses, you don't have um, all that many people, right, that you can fully dedicate to data analysis. So selecting the right partner that enables you to have um, those platforms and those tools that can allow you to take very quick decisions that really have a big impact on your business. This is, this is really, really key. So it, you mentioned earlier that um, there's a, a, a large increase or a, a notable increase in the amount of repeat business um, is that repeat business, uh, get, I, I, for lack of a better way to say it, are they, are they retrieving their, their meal in, in the same way as they did before? In other words, obviously in, in, um, in store dining is, is very slim at this moment, but are they using um, takeout uh, aggregators? Are they using the drive-through or, or has that changed? Uh, absolutely. I mean, as Rod was mentioning before, there's like a boom in um, drive-throughs and curbside pickups and takeout areas. Um, there's a boom in delivery. Um, and I think what, what is really important for restaurants is not to um, fully rely on um, delivery aggregators. So of course, those are great marketing tools to enable you to access clients that you would otherwise not access. But you, you really want to ensure that you have you want to have a direct sales channel, especially for the delivery. So obviously for the drive through, people come to you. Uh, but when it comes to delivery, um, do make sure that you offer a direct sales channel for that um, so that um, you gain ownership of that relationship as well and not just rely on third party aggregators. It's good to have a good mix. But you know, even for the, the small percentage of in dining that's happened now and it's, you know, opening up a little more here and there. And so many restaurants have switched away from hand menus and all the QR codes and digital codes are coming back. Um, 
you know, I was at a restaurant the other day and actually sat down. Wow. You know, sat down at a restaurant. That was a, kind of a real interesting thing again. Um, but I scanned a digital code and I was there before, you know, probably second or third time I've been there since COVID. And all of a sudden it popped up on my phone. Hey, last time you were here, you ordered this. Would you like it again? Wow. Well, you know who I am. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it is, it is real interesting, the whole keeper of the data, knowing who you are. And, you know, there's, there's ways to, uh, you know, help that out, speed things up. And, you know, even through the drive through and, you know, pre-ordering, you know, having uh, lanes that uh, bypass the drive through lane so you can just go pick up and, you know, do all that. I mean, it's uh, many, many different avenues today. Yeah, I was going to ask you, Rod and Laura, what you've seen as far as the changes in the technology since, you know, our principal business is, is drive-throughs is making drive-throughs what kind of change in technology has um has become noticeable in the last couple of months i noticed with some of the customers that i've been talking to you know more of the the, the larger chains you know we've been we've been talking a lot of digital so the, the static menus um kind of want to be replaced now by digital menu boards because there's so many things that they can do with them, you know, um, to be able to give that customer um, the experience they're looking for. And with the LTOs and promos and, you know, having, you know, whole metrics of, you know, when you drive through your, your phone's kind of pinging the system and boy, a different LTO may show up because, you know, Eugene come through versus, you know, me coming through, you know, so there's a lot of different, uh, uh, avenues that are changing there. Um, kiosks at one time, you know, two or three years ago were being talked about, then they kind of died down again. Now all of a sudden kiosks are, are big, uh, big ask for again. So it's uh, another one of those avenues where, you know, they want to give customers that additional avenue to, without coming to the counter, to be able to place their own order if they are coming inside. Um, but the whole drive through give the customer experience the same way as if they were coming inside. Mm -hmm. So is off premise selling, I guess you would call it that. Um, is it a fad or is this something that's going to be uh, with us forever? Much more than it used to be. <laughs> Again, we believe the, uh, the COVID crisis um, just accelerated the in inevitable. Um, so yeah, this new generation, they're, they're not necessarily looking to go dining out somewhere unless it's a very special event. Um, and, uh, but for the, the casual days, um, they, they prefer to order from just wherever they are um, and whenever they want, to, want it to be. <laughs> But there's no set hour and um, it all has to be very flexible. And that's why the whole digitization in, in restaurant technology ordering is really, by definition, a multi-channel approach. Um, whatever is closest, whatever is most convenient, whatever um, just works at a given time. Um, so in order to really um, embrace and make sure that you get the most out of um, your business and you don't lose any customers or you, you don't miss any sales. Um, you can't really avoid of having every channel out there that is possible. And that's, that's the approach we have taken as a, as a company, realizing that you know, what happened in other sectors to some extent or to a large extent already like retail, um, that you just have to combine all, this, all, the, all the channels into one system. Otherwise it's becoming an, an operational nightmare. You can't, as you have often today, uh, that you have to feed different delivery aggregators from different backends, or you're not even allowed to do it by yourself. I mean, we enable that so you can uh, feed any delivery channel and your own channels, Google food ordering, whatever is out there uh, from the same backend. And you get all the data back. <laughs> and then you can match the data again to reach back out to the customer and hopefully bring them back onto your direct channel because that's what your ultimate goal should be. Yeah. There's, but because there's so much choice, you can't avoid having all of them. 
and it's 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 getting more competitive now that restaurants that weren't offering takeout or carry out or curbside delivery are now offering that. So it's extremely important to understand what's motivating your customer to buy and how they're buying. So having all this information from all these different avenues and streams and being able to connect with your customer in a way is going to be more important now than it has been in the past with more competition on the market. And I have a, I have a family member that works at uh, one of the big cellular places. And he said too, he goes, it's amazing, <clears throat> especially like the 60 and older generation are actually coming in and hey, I, I need a smartphone like everybody else has because I want to order from my phone as well. <laughs> and you know, my grandkids and everybody will teach me how to do this. And he said this, the sales from that sector of the market has just increased tenfold because you know they used to just use their phone for calling. Now they realize man, this, this is my lifeline right here now to get all the food I want delivered, take out delivery and pre-order and pay. Yeah, it's just like in the traveling industry. <laughs> Even my dad had to learn it. <laughs> I think, you know, the, I think you might call it the Amazon effect. Um, I guess in, in, in the business that we know very well, the, the drive through drive through restaurants, the impulse buy is as you drive down the street, you see a restaurant with a drive through you know, a coffee shop that has a drive through and you'll stop in. Um, but you have to be driving down that street in order to see it. So the impulse opportunities are, are minimal if you're not in the proximity of a restaurant. And Laura, I think, um, could you speak to the, um, you know, the choices that people make as far as do I want to, do I want to go into the restaurant or do I want to go through a drive through That used to be the choice. Is it, you know, my convenience is to park my car, get out of my car, get my kids out of the car, go into the restaurant or to go through the drive through And I think it was a competitive advantage in the past to have a drive through And now that seems to be shifting to having these digital assets. It, it is. And it also is reflective of um, the brand that you want to present as well. So when drive through, when you think drive through, you think big name fast food chains. You don't think local mom and pop restaurants that can offer quick, fast, healthy food through the drive through themselves, um, where you used to go and dine in regularly. Now you have the option of drive through. So people's um, options are expanding. And I think it's it's interesting to see, and as a mom of three myself, like I'm a huge drive through fan <laughs> because I can go ahead and everybody gets what they want. And, you know, and I do, and some of the bigger chains that already have loyalty programs, I do get messages and emails that are directed towards me because of buying patterns. Um, but it, I, I think it's, um, it's not gonna go away for sure. And I think people in their busy lives and how they're thinking of, what they want to feed their their families and themselves um there's more options out there and i think it's going to stay where you see a lot more pick pick up um curbside and drive through but again i think it, it really is based on how things are set up um and we're happy to help you take a look at what you've got for setup now in terms of curbside spacing um drive through spacing um we can help analyze and and do what's best for your restaurant in terms of that as well and certainly, I think the it's necessary to keep in mind the you know the pickup in the in the aggregators. How how does a how does a physical structure of a restaurant now account for those? You know, like you said, Rod, the pizza places that have a whole bunch of slots, parking slots for for pickup people. That's going to be a completely different evolution to what a restaurant space looks like, I think. Right, right. It's just, it's, a, it's an ever-changing space out there right now until whatever we're going to call normal comes back. Mm. Right. <laughs> yeah. well, some people well, say that curbside is the new uh, drive through or somebody, some people call it the car side as well, <laughs> because, um, I mean, there is uh, digital solutions out there for drive through but there's no real consensus at this moment. Um, so, because you may order digitally, 
but then you may still end up in a line unless there's a separate <laughs> mobile drive-through area. And um, so that's why a lot of people are curbside these days. And that's when you end up with 40 port parking lots <laughs> of, <laughs> of uh, places to bring the order, uh, the order to. Um, yeah, it's, it's very exciting. And um, some of the tracking location services help us to really make sure that the order is always on time, just in time and always fresh and, and, and hot. Um, by the time, time they're delivered to, to the customer. One more question that occurs to me, and then um, I, there's a, a question that I want to offer from the, the audience. Um, where does human interaction play into this? I, you know, it's, it's one thing to get all this great information from data, um, but how do you tie that back to that making that personal connection um, with the people that you're that you're buying from or selling to. Right now, we're told to avoid them, <laughs> so that's why. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope we get back to a stage where we can have those human interactions again. Um, and I think uh, everybody is hoping that even the younger generation who do not tend to have, I mean, they're communicating more than than we ever did. I think just with um, in a different way, uh, mm -hmm. a lot more digitally <laughs> so yeah. but they have very strong personal relationships too it's not that they would want to avoid it um, but yeah I think it all depends on how the COVID crisis um, con continues to evolve but I think at the moment everybody is just focused on contactless and that's where all the technologies also focus on right right yeah, and Gina, maybe also to, to add to that, I mean, in fact, um, what technology offers is uh, a tool to really enable restaurants to have more interactions. So should, should we get to that stage, hopefully very soon, where we can start interacting more with our clients, technology basically eliminates all the operational tasks that um, staff were busy doing, the kind of operational tasks that don't necessarily add a value, right? So if I tell you I want a burger and you type in burger, it's not an interaction, right? It's just you executing what I'm asking you with actually a margin of error because there's a lot of studies that show um, how much error actually occurs with, um, you know, call centers taking in orders on behalf of people because they don't understand the accent, et cetera. So um, restaurants can finally afford uh, assigning staff to what really adds value, which is actually looking into someone's eyes and saying, how are you doing? Um, are you enjoying your meal? This is all things that, uh, especially in the quick service restaurant segment where margins are low and, and restaurants had to be very cautious in how they actually utilize their staff. Now, finally, thanks to technology, um, a shift towards more personal interaction can happen if that's, if that's needed without worrying too much about the costs. Okay. Well, we have a question here um, uh, asking, do you have any uh, customers that are using your service that you'd like to tell us about? Yes. Any, any name dropping you can do? <laughs> sure. Yeah, we have, um, we, we're working with um, RBI on a global basis. Um, that includes Burger King, Popeyes, Tim Hortons. Um, so we are certified by both RPI and the YUM group. And of course we have a ton of uh, mid-sized um, customers which you may not necessarily um, be familiar with. Okay. So for example, we have the European Sweet Green as well. <laughs> okay. Yeah. How long from it, it, would it take to get a system like this up and running from start to finish? That depends on the integrations we need to build. Um, we have a lot of gateways, so it's a Meanwhile, it's a very efficient process, but still, uh, depending on the uh, support from the counterparty, um, uh, POS integration or payment delivery integration takes anywhere between um, two to eight weeks, depending on the quality of the API and, again, the support. But usually we, we can implement most um, restaurant chains within four to eight weeks. Well, okay. And that includes uh, their own branding, of course, I assume. Yes, of course. We have a brand builder. I mean, um, we just worked um, on a customization center. So 
is a lot of customization options that our customers can do by themselves. Okay. And also manage all the strings, the languages, and everything. So it's a re it's really a system for um, self use. <laughs> okay. Good. All right. Well, I think that about wraps it up. Does anybody have any final comments for our for our audience? I'll just stay safe out there. Stay safe out there. Yes. Stay safe. Well, thank you all for joining. Thank you to our panelists for your uh, words of wisdom. And on behalf of the Howard Company and Menu Technologies, um, we look forward to working with, with all of you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.